One of the main themes of growing up is immediately represented after Inside Out's opening. As we follow Riley from her small sheltered Minnesota into the massive complex cityscape of San Francisco. Charting a transition into the next stage of her life. A transition of size and complexity. The control panels also subtly shift, from the single emotion that Riley could comprehend as a child, to the larger more complex one that we see when we meet her at 11 years old. But one of the boldest moves that the directors took with Inside Out, one that is heavily intertwined with the message of growing up, was to actually explore why we feel sad. And it's a good question. What's the point of feeling sad over a breakup? Or feeling sad about a move? Why not just be happy and move on? Well, Inside Out shows us through sadness herself. Sadness in this film is part of Headquarters. Love that name. And is an emotion that no one truthfully understands. Especially you Joy. Met sadness. She? Well, she... I'm not actually sure what she does. And because of this, when sadness comes knocking at a pivotal point in Riley's maturity, needing more control than ever, she is literally bottled up and forced into her circle of sadness. Here, I think Inside Out takes a serious jab at the way that kids are taught to control their emotions through film. Taught like Riley to always be happy and be rewarded for it, but to never be sad. Here, I've highlighted a few key words from this very important conversation to help you understand what it's actually saying. You've stayed our happy girl. Your dad's under a lot of pressure. But if you and I can keep smiling, it would be a big help. So Riley ignores her pressing sadness and instead turns to Joy to cover it all up, creating a facade. A great example of this control can be seen in a spectacular one that the film puts across. It's so important to watch how the camera follows Joy in this scene, never leaving her side, placing a huge emphasis upon her. Cleverly, you can follow this progression externally, with Riley covering her shirt proudly displaying all of her emotions in colour with a deep yellow jacket, symbolic of Joy taking over her emotional state. This shot in particular shows this dynamic extremely well, with Riley covering up her emotions with that deep yellow jacket, but also still being able to see Riley's emotions hanging out the side with her shirt. The framing of this shot is also incredibly clever, as we can see Riley framed between her two parents which fill up the foreground, showing that she is being happy to remain between them to keep them happy. If you wanted to look even deeper, you could say her shutting the door here is a way of shutting her parents out. Thus, Inside Out begins to explain how our memories can turn from happy to sad, and how ignoring feeling can lead to feeling nothing at all. In Riley's outburst in class, in her failed attempt to control her sadness, she chooses to push it down even further. An action which sends her two most important emotions away, leaving behind only disgust, anger, and fear. And a pretty interesting explanation for depression. Now externally, her shirt is a violently turbulent, wiry string of colour. Her emotions are all messed up inside. And as she remains in denial of this feeling, she falls deeper into this emotionless void, literally and figuratively in the film. Until the next time we see her, she's drabbed completely in black. It isn't until the crux of the film, when she's accepted her sadness and let go of her childhood, can we see a literal representation of this colour returning. But at what point does this pivotal realization come? Well, it isn't until Joy is almost forgotten. Only at this point does Inside Out truly delve into why we need to feel sad. Among Riley's fading childhood, Joy realizes something. Something that we all do at some stage in our life. That being happy is not limitless. Being sad is essential, sometimes more essential than being happy itself. It helps us mature, let go, and more importantly, grow as people. For example, Bing Bong is only able to move on and grow as a character once he's comforted by sadness instead of being distracted by Joy's silly antics. Joy has an aura of blue for a reason. Joy and sadness are always connected, one cannot exist without the other. And so cleverly, it's only in this scene here where we start to begin to understand this idea as Joy herself starts to cry. Thus, Riley can only be happy again when she understands that she's not happy. But this acceptance comes with maturity, and this is where Inside Out explores its idea of emotional acceptance against growing up. There exists a perfect symbol of childhood in the film, 
a fading memory, a part of Riley stealing memories, refusing to be forgotten, holding on in a world that no longer needs him. Bing Bong is desperately trying to stay in a world that's slowly forgetting him. As we can see all around our characters, the idea that childhood is slowly being destroyed, with the castles being knocked, and the childhood memories being pushed into the memory dump. Riley is refusing to let go of her childhood, refusing to let go of Bing Bong, and refusing to feel sad. But Bing Bong exists as a metaphor that we all need to let go. Bing Bong is the last final step. That's why it's all the more powerful when he eventually accepts this and sacrifices himself, so Riley can be happy once more. It's because of the sacrifice that Joy can leave the abyss and truly make Riley happy again. Not just because of her understanding of sadness, but the acceptance that she can't bring back Riley's childhood. Bing Bong weighs down the wagon because he's no longer needed. Childhood needs to be left behind. And it's in this way that Inside Out personifies the feeling of weightlessness, once we let go of something. And as Bing Bong fades, we see a truthful display of growing up. It's not easy, it's hard, and sometimes things need to be left behind. But it's only in this way can we grow as people. This is why Inside Out was one of my favourite films of the year, because it strikes a chord that many films aren't even brave enough to touch. Contrary to Inside Out's opening, its ending places a huge emphasis on sadness. Bookending itself with what it considers to be our two most important emotions. An idea with which I agree. Hi guys, first off I want to thank you so much if you're still watching at the end of this video. This one took a long time to make, I recorded it a bunch of times until I was happy with it. Hopefully you can tell there's a difference in audio because I've got a new microphone, but more to the point, thank you so much for watching. I know I've been gone for so long, but I'm back now and I've got a lot of stuff planned up for you guys, so it's all very exciting. Thank you so much for watching again, you guys have no idea how much I appreciate it. Please do consider subscribing, you never have to, but these do take a long time to make and I would really appreciate it. Anyway. That's my little ramble. Thank you so much for watching again. Nick out.